This is Dave from DQ Studios and Motiboto, and I'm here to talk about the new features we've got in Motiboto for Lightroom 5. And one of the great new toys that we've taken advantage of for Lightroom 5 users is the new radial gradient local adjustment. And this is very similar to the linear gradient that we had in Lightroom 3 and 4, but with a twist. It can be any circle or size that you want. Now, this is great for not only for off-center vignettes, but also for dodging and burning. Let's take a look at Lightroom. And what we've done is made the default um, for the gradient key now executes the radial gradient instead of the linear gradient. So instead of drawing a line, you can just draw a circle from the center out and you just press and hold and drag that circle. Now, what if you want to have that linear gradient back? Just press and hold the Alt Option key and press that gradient key and now I will have that old style linear gradient as well. Now, why is this going to be so useful? Well, for vignettes, if I was going to use the old vignette tools, I could just, you know, um, decrease the amount of uh, vignetting here or choose my presets to add a vignette. But the problem is it indiscriminately darkens all of the outer edges of the, uh, the subject of the image. And that's a problem with croppings like this where our subject, our couple, is in the corner and the sides here. So let's reset that vignette, get rid of it and see how would we do this better with our radial gradient. The first thing I do is decrease the entire exposure of the image so that the darkest part of it is going to be as if it was already vignetted. So don't look at the couple right now, but look at the darkness over here, and that's about as dark as I want it to be in the darkest area of the image when it's done. Now I'm going to brighten my couple by using the new radial gradient key. So just execute the radial gradient, and a couple of things we need to do to set it up so it works better for us and be, is more subtle versus just harsh as far as the haloing is concerned. First of all, I recommend increasing the feather to 100, maxing it out, and I also recommend, well, how I work is I invert the mask, and that's why we darkened the image. And now, with this invert mask ch checked, what it will do is brighten just the inside part of the circles that I draw. The third step is to just decrease the power of the dodge and burn. Now, just like the brush and the linear gradient, the radio gradient can take advantage of all of my local presets. But the dodge light is a little bit heavy handed at a full stop when you're using a radial gradient. So I'm going to bring that down to uh, anywhere between 0.2 and 0.3 will do the trick. And that's 0.31 right now. Now, if you want to save this and overwrite your old dodge, just click over here and go all the way to the bottom. You can't see it, but I'm just going to click on Update Preset for Dodge 2. And now, whenever I call up that Dodge key, it will no longer be a full stop. It'll be 0.31 stop, so really nice. So the first step, I'm going to just click on the center of my subject, and I'm going to drag out a really big circle and um, bring them out. Now, that's pretty subtle right there. And right now, I can still use my right and left arrow keys. The right one will brighten it, and the left one will darken the circle only. And I'm going to reveal my uh, radial gradient right here with my hide key. You can just press that and toggles the radial gradient on and off so you can see what you're doing or hide it when you want to. Now, I don't want to go too high with this, so I'm going to just look at their shirts. That's about all I want, but their faces are still too dark. So I'm going to add a second radial gradient. I'm going to press return, and that allows me to draw a second radial gra gradient just around their faces here. And so now I'm just going to move this just over their faces. And because it's obscuring their faces a little bit, I'm going to hit the hide key. But even when it's hidden, of course, when I use my arrow keys, I can still brighten just that spot or darken it at will. Now, when it's done to perfection, you're finished and you're done with your radial gradient. And we've also added another feature that works equally well with the new radial gradient as well as the brush tools. And it's a new local tool reset. And what that will allow you to do is very quickly copy and paste settings from image to image and then just reapply the um, radial gradient or brushes per image as needed. So that's going to be with the control the key right here at the bottom uh, bottom left here beside the function key. So as we go here, let's take a look at what this means. So this next image was taken in very similar lighting. And if I hit the previous settings key, it applies everything, uh, but with a little bit of a problem. If I reveal my radial gradient, you'll notice that because the subjects are framed differently, this is totally off and missing the mark. So I could just reposition each one um, and uh, drag them around and move them all over, but it's probably faster for me to just reset all of them and start from scratch for just the radial gradients. But I want to keep everything else, the exposure and everything else. So you just press and hold the control key, hit the gradient, and it will get rid of all those for you. So very nice, and it's just a very simple way to allow you to start again. And now I can start um, adding my vignettes or my, my dodging and burning at, at will for every image thereafter. 
really nice and fast. So that's the new reset that we have and that works for the gradient as well as the brush. The last thing I want to talk about is the new auto perspective corrections and we've got them for to take advantage of the new auto upright presets that we have. Now, I can't shoot straight to save my life and so I really liked using the crop tool before and of course we've got that bubble level where you could just draw to anything on the horizon and that sometimes is still also the best way to do it because that's done for me right there. Um, but there's a new auto upright feature that we can take advantage of and you'll take a look at the uh, presets that we have included from 11 we've got upright auto, we've got upright level, upright vertical, upright full and upright off so that's kind of a reset and what I like to do is just see what everyone does and choose the best one. So press and hold your shift key and you can just press F1 and that kind of automatically corrected exactly the same way that my crop would have done it with my, um, but with less time. And now I can press shift F2 to see what the auto upright level looks like. Auto upright vertical, auto upright full, which really messes things up and auto upright off. And so essentially what I like to do whenever I see a structure in there, I'll just see what looks best. So just shift F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, and then just I liked the F1 best. And so just a little bit of that tweak, but because it's all automated, it's so nice and easy to do. So those are the three new features that we love and use of Lightroom 5. And besides that fact, Lightroom 5 is faster, we're finding, than Lightroom 4. So Motiboto can really help you speed up. So thanks for watching.